I suppose you want me to sort of say something. Um, I'm enjoying the, the moment. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rapelang. Let me start by saying that I had a great education. I could ask as many questions as I wanted, do pass papers, additional assignments, and almost always get comprehensive feedback. But despite that privilege, I often wondered about the inefficiencies in my learning process. After a test, I would look at the script and look through the answers I got wrong and promise myself to come back to them, which really, really ever happened. I would browse through some of the questions I got right and be silently grateful for my luck. You know, I look back on that and I think, surely everybody else was thinking the same thing. And what if we could change all of that? What if there was a system where it tracked all my answers and brought me back to the questions I got wrong until I got them consistently right? What if it could double-check or triple-check even the ones I got right? So if my luck ran out on another attempt, bring me back to those questions too. What if I could have become a better student if I'd had those kind of support systems? I've come to learn that the learning efficiencies that I spotted during school were just the tip of the iceberg. You see, I would spend hours rereading sections, hoping that on the second or third time it would stick longer in my brain. So I was amazed to learn that the scholar and philosopher William James already asserted in the late 1800s that active retrieval, testing, was far more effective in knowledge retention than passive retrieval, reading. Even Aristotle knew this too thousand years ago. You see, testing continuous assessment isn't just a method to measure where you are. It's a learning tool in and of itself. A mnemonic enhancer, far more effective in knowledge retention than rereading. But now that I think about it, what would I have done at school other than wait for the tests? It would have been implausible or too time-consuming to try setting and taking my own tests. I've also learned something else. On the few occasions when I did test myself, which is an exaggeration because I'll just hide the answer with a blank piece of paper and try my best not to peep, I would do it at most once. But the key to retention is not in one soft retrieval, but in repeated retrieval. I did get away with a pretty decent education nonetheless, but these kind of learning inefficiencies are exacerbated exponentially in resource-constrained schools. I'm part of a maths tutoring program at one of the high schools in, a, in the townships, and most often these kids don't see a full marked test script. They see a mark. So they don't get to know what they did wrong, or right, for that matter. Learning is such a big space with so many extraneous variables that affects the whole process, but I believe, I have a hypothesis that one of the simplest things we can do to rekindle learning is to close the feedback loop. What if we took a different approach to learning? What if it was just as easy for me to pull out my phone, open an app that tested me on this week's math content or a legislative or process change at work as it was for me to start tweeting, chatting, or sending yet another email? What if it was so simple to use, it always remembered where I left off, tracked the questions I got wrong, and helped me customize a learning plan to focus on them more than the ones I got right? What if it was so accessible, with bite-sized chunks of information, that I could use it while in the car or train or bus to school or work or during the dead pockets of time that we have during the day? What if it was so useful I could see at a glance what I know and easily reinforce what I don't? I know we've seen a lot of innovation in the education space. Streaming lectures, online videos, digital textbooks, all as a means to get various forms of content online. While digitizing content is crucial, it ultimately only solves the issue of access. It doesn't automatically ensure that learning has happened. After you've watched that video or read that textbook, how do you know the level of knowledge attained? How do you close the feedback loop? In the words of William Gibson, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. We don't have to think in what ifs. These kinds of learning applications are already being used. Doctors in Austria um, use it to support their ongoing medical education and training through the NET Doctor program. According to one of the doctors, I quote, 
Physicians today are confronted with the widening gap between too little time and too much knowledge. So you see, learning on mobile is the only way they can fit it in. The government of Bahrain is using mobile learning to push capacity building and knowledge transfer to enable them to better deliver government services. The results are already compelling, enough for them to expand the solution to cover more and more of the 300,000-person workforce. Both these organizations have large bodies of knowledge to transfer, and adaptive, retention-focused mobile applications are succeeding where traditional methods have failed. In Kenya, a study was done where medical health workers who had already been trained but still struggled to adhere to the medical guidelines on the administration of malaria medication were sent SMS messages containing instructional guidelines and motivational quotes twice a day, five times a week, for a period of 26 weeks. The repetition of the messages was initially just a reminder to implement the correct practices. But over time, that reinforcement formed a habit, such that the medical health adherence and performance did not decline significantly after the SMSs stopped. Even though not a full learning application, we can see that the simple learning principles work. Let me be clear, this is not about rote learning or regurgitating what you've heard. It's about achieving core mastery in content that enables you to get to the next level of application and thought, where you can recognize, compare, critically review, engage in argument, and formulate your own opinions. It's essential to be able to get to that next level of application, and no matter how big Google or the internet get, it's not going to be enough. A certain level of mastery must be reached, and a certain level of knowledge must be retained in your mind if it is to be efficiently applied. There are a number of other projects happening around the world aimed at getting technology into education and learning that are not seeing as compelling results. The typical solution there tends to be Let's give learners tablets and problem solved. We get lost in or overly fascinated by the idea of technology being a solution in itself, that we hope that learning works like technology, as if you can just turn it on, as if putting a sophisticated device in a room suddenly makes everyone else around it more sophisticated too, by some process of diffusion. We forget that hardware is just a small piece of the puzzle the service, the product, how you package the value you want to deliver are a far, far bigger piece of that puzzle. Most of our energy should be focused on how we deliver a quality learning experience through technology, and we must still apply prudence and common sense to ensure it is relevant to users' needs and contexts. When you listen to your favorite radio station, you don't often think about what type of radio it is or what medium. You just want to listen to the radio, and it's that station, that particular experience you're looking for. Learning, education, training are so essential to so many parts of our society. But what strides have we really taken to more effectively achieve this major socioeconomic need of skilling at scale? Let's take a step back. What is it about this kind of mobile learning that really changes the game? Learning on a smaller screen compels us to look at content in a different way, in small steps, micro-learning. You can visualize it as a flashcard. Breaking up content into these small steps is actually what suits our brains better. For ages, we have also known that we consume information better in small chunks. Look no further than the popularity of Facebook and Twitter and general tweets. Small steps are also more easily repeatable, which we also need for higher retention. Using questions, we are able to leverage active retrieval for higher retention. Providing immediate feedback after each learning step reinforces learning by closing the feedback loop and raising the level of engagement. With that feedback in hand quickly, the application can intelligently decide on the next learning step according to the progress of that individual user. The best thing about using testing and questions as a learning tool instead of a measurement tool is that you can do away with arbitrary time limits, like you have 90 minutes and whatever you get at the end of those 90 minutes is what you get. What's the point of getting to the end of a test with 30% anyway? 
With this kind of application, it's about retention. And you only finish when you've reached a certain level of knowledge retention. For example, you've gotten all the cards correct consistently on three or four separate occasions. And this kind of process helps move knowledge from short-term to long-term memory. The convenience of mobility also changes how we can interact with learning content. Suddenly, it can be spontaneous, sporadic, something we do to pass time as part of a lifestyle, instead of something you hope to achieve at the end of the day if you still have some energy. Things like corporate just-in-time learning become a reality when all you have to do is reach for your phone. Mobile learning also lends us transparency and individuality. Each learning step and the feedback it engenders elicits clear data on the areas of weakness for particular individuals. Such feedback can inform the next steps that the educator and learner may choose to take more profoundly than we can imagine and also help bring about the end of the classroom phenomenon of teaching into the middle. The limited testing we're doing now can't possibly elicit the depth of objective data at the level of granularity that we can achieve on digital platforms. Comparatively speaking, we're operating in black holes of ignorance, and access to more data will transform both learning and teaching of the future. You see, closing the feedback loop isn't about just the immediate feedback the learner gets. It's also about the feedback for the educator, the trainer, the facilitator, for the broader learning and education system to be able to self-correct and improve. Can you imagine how throughout your life learning could have been so different? My father often tells the story of my late grandfather, a man of no formal education at all. My father would tend to the cattle, which was the basis of the little they had, food, wealth, sustenance. My grandfather said to him, go, leave these things. Something will happen to them or someone will steal them. Leave these things and get an education, something no one can take away from you. Both my parents were the first in their families to finish high school and receive quality tertiary degrees, and that has made all the difference in their lives. I need not look further than my own family to appreciate the gross malaise that can happen to the human mind when you deny it in education. Mobile devices present us with invaluable opportunities to transform learning and give the learner greater personal control and ownership over their own learning path. Furthermore, they present us with the opportunity to personalize learning according to the progress of each individual. It's estimated that we can forget some 80% of what we learn if we don't take active steps to reinforce it. Free of any academic drill, learners young and old can rekindle learning and develop their learning ambition on mobile devices. If we truly wish, to address the educational development challenges on this continent, including the need to scale at significant scale, we must begin to ask how to articulate a mobile learning experience that better equips us to, better, to reach our own potential, a learning experience that transfers core skills and knowledge, a learning experience that improves organizational performance, a learning experience that gets more kids through school. And this is something that we as Africans are going to need to figure out for ourselves. Thank you.